when I first started teaching on the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, I didn't really expect what happened. <laughs> and that may sound surprising to some of you, but I thought that, and this will sound even more surprising perhaps, that I already knew it all. You know, oh sure, I expected that there was some things to be learned, as there always is something to be appreciated about how you look at things a little differently. You know, your perspective changes sometimes when you study and restudy and study again. But <coughs> it was interesting this time that having been brought up, you know, in a tradition like with Calvary Costa Mesa, that I had heard the first set of Spirit Series tapes, you know, and then the second set, and then all the different books that had come out, and we had really exhausted a lot of discussion and topic, you know, when we talked about the Spirit, because there was so much deviation at times going on with offshoots into Pentecostalism, or experientialism, or vineyards, or worship, or the Word, and there was a lot of mix and mixology going on there at Main Calvary, you know, to, so to speak, of of varying degrees of opinions about how, who, what, where, when, why the Holy Spirit operates. And a lot of it was the Holy Spirit. Well, for me, it was interesting because my perspective had always been the Spirit of God. Because it says that the Spirit of God dwelt, you know, above the waters, you know, in Genesis 1 1. And I, or in Genesis 1, I'm not sure if it's one one. I said, in the beginning was the word, or you know, in the beginning God created. But anyways, the point being is that my perspective about the spirit was slightly different. I incorporated into my lifestyle, you know, and those things that I saw and heard and had adapted that I knew were true because I had studied for myself, and they were things that I held to in my opinion, even though I had studied wealth of material presented by a variety of speakers that had come from various backgrounds, including Pentecostal and, you know, Spiritisms and, you know, Jewish backgrounds and, you know, the whole Shekinah, you know, or Shekinah or Shekinah, or if you want to get into it, the the uh, Shekianu, you know, and the, the glory of God as well as the spirit of Moshiach, you know, and the, the whole Tanya teachings, you know, and all these other things that I kind of like went, man, you know, there's a lot out there that's not completely off the wall, though it's not in the wall either. It's kind of like what wall is there? <laughs> but the point being is that there's more to heaven and earth than I ever dreamt of, you know, in my my concept than I believed true about the Spirit of God because I felt as though he was always, you know, the second guest in every type of conversation, but people kind of either abused or confused the role of the Holy Spirit. So that's kind of why we did this Holy Spirit series, you know, is that the evil spirit is all about the Spirit of God. And I took as it were the foundation for it being the living, the power of the Holy Spirit in your living water, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, which is based upon the, the Chuck Smith tape series. And I didn't expect much. Like I said, I expected, you know, a little insights. You know. Then, wow, it was as though the Spirit of God came upon the place. And the wind started blowing, kind of like it is now. And uh, my mind started opening, kind of like it is now. And I kind of began to let go of my baggage and preconceived ideas, kind of like I'm doing now. And I, I let the Holy Spirit take over, you know. And the Spirit of God seemed to lead me in a way that I... I was shocked to see things and understand things that I really didn't have a handle on before. And it kind of, well, it made me smile, but it made me gentler. Oh, no, I don't talk about, you know, like the gifts of the Spirit because we'll get there. And I've had every gift of the Spirit you can imagine, as well as those that aren't listed, and those that should be listed, and those that probably won't be listed, and those that, you know, are, are whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Believe me, I've experienced a lot when it came to those things. But now, it's like, wow. I could almost picture Keith Green at the 
peak of his ministry, doing all this evangelist work and you know seeing these things and saying these things, and then suddenly going, oh wow, and then you took me by surprise, and you opened up my eyes, like a foolish dreamer trying to build a highway to the sky. I, all my hopes would come tumbling down. I never knew just why until you caught me by surprise, and you opened up Keith Green's eyes, and. That's kind of what the Spirit of God did to me. He came to me. He comes to me. And He speaks to me. Oh, not of Himself. And not of giving gifts and doing miracles and, you know, all the extra stuff that people want and desire. That usually they get, you know, and I remember the funniest thing in my personal life was that when people were wanting all these gifts of the Spirit, I didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was. And I was getting all these gifts and doing things. And I didn't know what it was. It was like, why do you want that? I was amazed. <laughs> so, for the Spirit of God to come into my life in this way, and I don't mean baptism, Holy Spirit, been there, done that, fruits of the Spirit, got them, you know, here we go, you know, let, let's make the list, you know, work our way through. You know, done there, been there, done that. But to have Him, to have the Spirit of God <laughs> it's almost hard to speak when the Spirit of God is that real because you just want to live in perspective of that presence being there of that wholeness, completeness, that peace, that love, that joy. I guess the best way to explain what happened to me was that not only did the person of the Holy Spirit come, but He revealed to me some things that I know that maybe I'll get called a heretic, who knows. Who cares? <laughs> I don't. But that there are things we don't know about the Spirit of God as much as we know about the Spirit of God. There's a lot more we don't know <laughs> than what we do know. And that while I agree with what is taught, I also know there's so much more. And it's like, wow. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I look forward to. And in being enveloped, and that's the best word I could use in the English language grammar to really explain that right now, to be encapsulated in a overwhelming, powerful, emotive confluence of his spirit with mine, you just feel, wow, like complete, whole and more so than you would when you were just body or when you were just soul but being complete in body, soul, and spirit. And I think that's what it meant when Jesus went up on the mountain and was transfigured before their eyes was that he was revealed as fully complete in his God. Whatever you want to call that. And so when I had come to that place in teaching this, that the Spirit of God began to do that, I, I kind of pulled back. I was kind of like, wow, whoa, ooh, and amazed. And uh, I still am. I'm, I guess, blessed, but... I don't want people to take and go and run and make something out of false ideas that they have when the Spirit of God is seeking to move in their lives to heal, to complete, to make whole, and to make known the Word of God to them. When the Spirit of God comes, He doesn't come as a raging, roaring inferno like some people seem to imagine. 
the rage is our own emotion that like a dangling nerve like a jangling drum like a tingling tangling drum dum dum hit the cymbals that's not the Holy Spirit that's the person reacting to the Spirit of God the Spirit of God is gentle even like a warm flame like a tongue of fire so to speak like a enveloping holiness hmm. and people have got it so wrong that they sometimes bark like dogs and I don't know maybe they crawl like cats I don't know maybe they dance and prance like ants you know but God wants to move in a way that people haven't really understood him because the world is getting more violent and this overreaction to the Spirit of God and the things of the Spirit has caused people to go way off and open up doors that should never have been allowed to happen to them had they but sought God to let the Holy Spirit reveal to them Jesus in their midst. The Holy Spirit will not speak of himself, but he will reveal Jesus. The Holy Spirit will not claim special authority to himself, but he will reveal the Son. If you want to see the embodiment of the Spirit of God, you need only look at Jesus. In the same way that the Father said, if you want to see the embodiment of God the Father, you look to Jesus. <coughs> the Spirit acts as a person. The Holy Spirit speaks. Again, it's hard to think of something other than a person speaking. Yet Acts 13.2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And in 1 Timothy 4.1, Paul writes, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from that faith. Revelation 2.7 likewise says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, I want to stop there. and You know, there's the voice of many waters. There's the voice of the Spirit. There's the voice of the Lord. There's, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. There's a lot being spoken here that if you don't break it down into pieces you kind of miss the meaning here we're not talking about God speaking because you see God the Father has spoken at a time and everyone heard this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased listen to him that's the Father speaking and it sounded to some as the voice of thunder the voice of thunder seems to be as though that were God speaking but in reality, if we have ears to be able to hear it, it wouldn't be thunder we heard, but God. So, I don't know what to tell you. Is that God speaks as thunder? No. It's just some people with lack of... <laughs> or lying. No, I'm kidding. But with lack of foresight in the, in the things of the Spirit, they would perceive it as thunder because God would withhold from them the intimacy of His own voice. And so... We do know that God has a voice and that we should be able to hear God speak. Jesus spoke and we're told that his disciples spoke to him and heard him and we're told at different times and places that Jesus has spoken even after he rose from the dead. He appeared to them for many days afterwards and spoke to many different disciples. So Jesus has a voice and he even told us that his sheep hear his voice and they know me. And we're told all the way through the book of Revelation that Jesus was speaking so Jesus has a voice I personally have heard Jesus speak audibly I haven't heard the Father speak audibly I hadn't thought about it till just now and so again there's a uniqueness that I'm looking forward to the Father has done some things uniquely with me and to me and by me or around me or whatever and I've enjoyed that and it's opened my eyes to some marvelous teachings hmm. boy does it but I've never really heard the voice of our Father speak to me yet now I hadn't really thought to ask so you know me <laughs> I'm kind of 
borderline going, I think I want to hear. Now, besides the Father, and I have heard Jesus speak, now we're told the Spirit of God speaks. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Well, I don't use similes and metaphors. I believe there are similes and metaphors possibly in Scripture, but I don't use similes and metaphors when God is telling me that he's speaking. And if the Spirit of God says he's speaking, then I believe that he's speaking in an audible voice and we should be able to hear it. So, for me, I'm looking forward to, through this study, before we're done, audibly hearing the Spirit of God speak to me. Now, has he told me that yet? No. <laughs> has he said, now, because you're studying this and because you're doing this and you're trying to share this with all these people that I'm going to bless you with this gift of hearing God speak? No. <laughs> no, he hasn't. But it's more like my challenge to myself to grow as he's been growing me up in this study to learn to hear what it is the Spirit of God says. So I want to hear the voice of the Spirit speak to me at least once. Now I'll admit, you know, Jesus doesn't come knocking on my door every day and come talking to me, you know, audibly every day. No. But I do know that the Spirit of God, as I mentioned before in this study, Video Spirit, that he has always visited whenever we have spent this time sharing and caring and daring to ask God to intervene here with us by his spirit. And he's always sent like the hummingbird. You know, the one I've told you about. And he sent the turtle dove. And he sent the wind. And he's given me often little tokens of love that had manifested themselves to me when it was time to relate the Spirit of God. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited in a peaceful way. I'm kind of looking forward to what it is that the Spirit of God might say. I'm kind of anticipating what it is that He might reveal to us. Maybe you are too. Maybe you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. All you need to do is ask and he would baptize you. Maybe you've never received the Spirit of God. Jesus breathed upon them and told the disciples, receive the Spirit of God. He said that after they were born again that they would receive power if they waited upon the Spirit of God. It is probable that there are three aspects to the Spirit of God. One of being made aware, born again of the Spirit, so to speak. Being baptized in the Spirit and then hearing the Spirit speak. I do believe that that may be a tripartite aspect of body, soul, and spirit that we all need to participate in seeking to find. But I can tell you this, that Whatsoever you do in the things of the Spirit, they are always based upon the Word of God. They are always from and highlighted by Jesus, because he's, Jesus is the Word of God. From cover to cover, from the volume of the book, if you opened it up and saw a heart with the word Jesus written across, you'd probably be pretty close to being accurate about what the Word of God is. Almost. But the physical representation of God speaking in heaven is the manifestation of the Son of God as we see him in the embodiment of the Word itself. He is the embodiment of the Word of God, Jesus. And so the Spirit of God never conflicts with or takes from or does anything but reveal to us the Spirit, the Word of God by way of spiritual revelation, by way of us understanding in our heart in our soul and in our spirit because our flesh is going to kind of like eh, you know think about it and kind of reject it because our flesh is programmable you may not have known it but your conscience your mind your intellect your intelligence are all programmable aspects of the fleshy part of your life and it's had a head start kind of like on programming your responses and your mindset but we're told to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. And the way that we renew our mind is by the Word of God 
richly dwelling in us in all psalms and songs and spiritual songs making melody in our hearts as well as sharing those things now any spiritual song sounds nice and it may minister to the soul but the things that will bring you life in your spirit will always be from the very word of life the word of God as it is written as it is heard and as it is as it is spoken to you and lived by you so <coughs> I'm kind of jazzed I want to be like Enoch I want to walk away and walk into heaven I know that the other night I was getting ready to do a rapture series teaching tape and I went man Lord I can't put this down I uh, and I was studying for myself I guess you know all about the rapture and you know people have this whole idea of like instantaneous you know disappearance you know and you know rapture disaster happening because you're flying an airplane suddenly poof you're gone there go the controls the airplane goes flying down you know I don't know if you thought about it but I thought that sounds pretty stupid to me so I've been arguing with God about that you know and God's been telling me you know no that's not the way it works and so I have you know my own perspective on all that but that's for a rapture series tape and not necessarily for the Spirit of God but Father I thank you that your Spirit gives us life and he gives us light and he has come to give us truth and he has come to show us the way I thank you that your Spirit has come to give us power that we might be able to put down our flesh and not power to stomp on other people but rather to enable others to study for themselves to grow thereby in the knowledge of you O God and your son Jesus for surely father you've given us your spirit so that we could pour it out upon other people that we can have him to reach out to another and to touch them in the words we say and the things we do and in the very attitudes of our heart as he changes us from glory to glory into the image of your son for surely God is it not the glory of God that the spirit you've given us is what you are telling us to become is it not your glory to put on us like a garment and to reveal that by your spirit we are saved for we have been born not of the flesh but of the spirit and that spirit that works in us is causing us to become more likened unto you so father I pray that the fruits of that spirit that you have given us he who is called the spirit of truth he who is called the spirit of God I pray that the love that he is would be grow in us I pray that the peace that you've given us Jesus would be made manifest through us I pray that the joy that you've enlightened in our light of our eyes would be made manifest to the world that we might show and prove and demonstrate through the love that we have for one another that the Spirit of God is moving in our midst Amen God bless you. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Walk. Talk. Be sensitized and be sensitive to the things of the Spirit. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we do have someone who is standing right inside you and right beside you, ready, willing, and able to open your eyes and ears to things you never dreamed of, except that He reveal it to you.